Hi everyone, today I'm making liquid soap. So I'm going to show you a full recipe of how I make um, my liquid soap. There's many different ways to make it and lots, lots in it, but I'm going to try and show you a, a beginner recipe today. If you've never made soap before, please check out my introduction to soap making video and please start your soap making with bar soap. Liquid soap making is similar in lots of ways to bar soap making, um, but the main difference is that liquid soap uses potassium hydroxide as a lye instead of sodium hydroxide. So this is potassium hydroxide. It's a really um, kind of thick, chunky, flaky material. So we'll be using this to make our lye water for our liquid soap. The other really key difference with liquid soap making is rather than it forming a solid soap at the end of the process, what you end up with is a paste. This is what the soap paste looks like for this recipe that I'm going to show. Um, so you make a liquid soap paste and then it becomes diluted. So it gets diluted with water and you end up with liquid soap. So I'm going to be making my liquid soap on the stove top today. You can also use a crock pot or a slow cooker which a lot of people use but I'm going to do the stove top method. I really like it. It works well for me and I think there's a lot of people who don't have crock pots so it's good to demonstrate this way. So the very first thing I like to do is I just weigh out my oils. So this stove is um, not hot at all. This hasn't been on. So I'm just going to use this to weigh my oils. I'm going to be using uh, 70 grams of coconut oil. Next goes in my olive oil. Make sure you zero your scale in between oils. 489 grams. I'm just going to pour that in. There's my olive oil and I'm also using uh, 140 grams of castor oil. So I'm zeroing my scale again and in goes 140 grams of castor oil. Okay, so there's my olive, my coconut and my castor oils. So there's 700 grams oil in total in this recipe. And this recipe has a 1% super fat. That's another key difference with liquid soap making is that, you know, and there's different ways of doing it, but the way that I like to do it is to use a zero to 3% super fat, keep that super fat very low. Make sure you measure your ingredients and calculate your recipe really accurately. Because if you use a high super fat in liquid soap making, um, you'll end up with unsaponified oils in the soap and that will create like a creamy layer that will separate out from the rest of your soap batch. So once you've got your oils measured out, then I like to make my lye solution. When you make your lye solution and throughout this whole process, it's really important that you use all of the safety measures that you need for any soap making. Eye cover is very, very important. This is a liquid um, soap batter that we're going to be blending quite a lot and it's going to be heated as well. So you need to protect your eyes. You also need to protect your lungs when you are making the lye solution because there will be some fumes. Um, I like doing this under my stove too because I can put the exhaust fan on um, but if you don't have that that's okay just make sure you do it in a ventilated area or you know by a window and stay out of the way but wear a mask as well also gloves gloves are really important you know protect your skin and especially for liquid soap making because you can get a little bit of splattering I like to wear long sleeves as well now you will notice in this recipe that I'm using a lot of water to make this soap paste. Now when I make bar soaps I use a really low water amount for different reasons and if you've seen any of my bar soap videos you'll understand what that's all about. But for liquid soap making you need to use a fair amount of water in your lye solution and one of the main reasons for that is that 
it makes it easier to mix you've got a bit more volume also you're cooking the soap as you're mixing it with liquid soap making so having a, a decent amount of water in your lye solution is important because you will get evaporation now in my recipes for liquid soap I like to use a 20% lye concentration solution that means in my lye and my water solution it's 20% potassium hydroxide and 80% of the solution is water so that's quite a lot of water the other thing for liquid soap making is the water that you use is different too here I'm using demineralized water now this is distilled water we don't get uh, distilled water in the supermarket in Australia it's called demineralized water but as far as I can tell it's the same thing and basically it's water that's been distilled and all the minerals and everything's been taken out of it now for liquid soap making if you want your soap to be perfectly clear like this you need to use demineralized water if you don't use demineralized water the minerals solids in your water will cloud your soap you can just use filtered water or even tap water it's quite okay because it's going to be boiled you won't get a perfectly clear soap but you can still make soap if you want you might get something that looks a bit more like that you know it won't be clear uh, but you can use regular water to make this soap. The only issue with that is when it comes to diluting your soap, because liquid soap has lots of water in the dilution, and I only make it for personal use, so I don't put any preservatives in it, you need to have sterile water. So this demineralized or distilled water, it, it's sterilized because it's, um, it's been distilled. So if you're going to use this, that's fine, just use that. But if you can't have this, then for the dilution, which I'll talk about a bit later, make sure you use boiled water. Like I said, I don't use any preservatives in my soap. That's a whole other subject. If you are wanting to make liquid soap to sell, then I would really encourage you to do your own research on preservatives for liquid soap making. All right, so water. I'm going to use 597 grams of distilled water. Oh, I got 599, but that's okay. Two grams of water isn't going to make a big difference. It's the lye and the oil amounts that are absolutely crucial for soap making. Next, I'll be weighing out my potassium hydroxide into a separate container. So, potassium hydroxide, I'm using 149 grams. It's really important that you weigh this in a separate container because it needs to be weighed very accurately. And if you put this straight into the water and you make a mistake, there's no taking it out. You've got to start all over again. Okay, now that I've got my potassium hydroxide weighed, I'm going to make my lye solution. I'm putting my mask on now and I'm going to turn the exhaust fan on. Now that I've got my lye solution made, I'm going to start cooking the soap. The two things that make liquid soap saponify or potassium soap saponify are heat and agitation some people do use a cold process liquid soap making method but i've never really had huge success with it but this is a surefire way to get your liquid soap to work i'm going to put my stove on just on low to medium heat basically i just want to dissolve the oils and get them all melted and warm if you were using a crock pot, uh, it depends on your approach. I actually like to go the hot and fast method rather than the slow and cooler method with my liquid soap making. So I do tend to crank up my crock pot to high and with this I will, I will be um, blasting these oil, oils fairly well. You will need a stick blender to make this soap. I've got mine over here ready to go. And really, for cooking the soap, the stick blender 
and a bit of patience is all you need. I'm going to be using this trusty uh, silicon spatula spoony thing because it works quite well. So this coconut oil is nearly melted. Because I use fairly high heat, because I don't really want to wait around all day for this soap to, to come together, I don't leave it. I supervise it pretty much the whole way through. Uh, and that, you know, makes it easier if you can do it faster. There are some soap, liquid soap making methods and recipes that take hours and hours and hours. <laughs> I like to do the quicker version. Now that my oils are well and truly all melted together and getting quite warm, I'm going to add the lye solution. You just pour it all in. So you can see there's a lot of water in that soap, but it does make it a lot easier to mix. What I've found with liquid soap making is every um, recipe behaves quite differently. So you've really just got to work with a recipe that does what you want it to do and, and has the finished qualities that you're happy with. You can play around with using different kinds of oils and things and you can make up your own recipes but uh, just be prepared for them to behave really differently. You might need to you know be ready for volcanoes and all sorts of things to happen. This soap, when I made it the first time, it didn't volcano at all. It um, came together really, really well. All right, so my lye mixes in with my oils. I'm gonna start stick blending now. You can see with this, it goes really milky quite quickly. Not all liquid soap recipes do that. This one does, which is awesome, but many don't. The other thing with making liquid soap on the stovetop is you've got to have a pot that is deep enough because if you're stick blending your soap and the soap isn't deep enough and the stick blender isn't submerged enough, you will get splattering, uh, which is not great. You want to avoid that if you can. Liquid soap recipes are also famous for burning out stick blenders because some recipes, not this one thankfully, but some recipes take a lot of blending. Actually this soap recipe with the 70% olive oil, 20% castor oil and 10% coconut, it doesn't separate. It's amazing. Works really well. I'll keep blending now. Needs lots and lots of blending liquid soap. I'm going to stop every now and then just to give the stick blender a rest, which is a good idea. And I've got this on 4, so that's like 4 out of 10 heat, which is pretty warm. Uh, just keep stirring it though, it loves to be agitated. As I said before, heat and agitation, that's what makes this soap happen. This will eventually get thicker and thicker. Alright, I'll keep going with some more stick blending now. Don't worry about froth, don't worry about bubbles, it's all good. The only thing you've got to worry about is reducing the splashes. Well, the soap is starting to get a bit thicker. I can feel it. You can't really tell, it is a little bit, whoops, a little bit thicker. I don't know if you can tell, but that is definitely thickening up. I would say that's, well, it's a bit hard to tell with all those bubbles, but that is definitely tracing now. As you can see, this recipe hasn't separated at all. Some so liquid soap recipes will separate a lot and you'll just have to keep blending them until they 
stay together. This one stays creamy pretty much right from the start. The soap is getting nice, getting thicker. Wow, it's really bubbly. You could be heading for a little bit of volcano action. Maybe it's getting thicker. I'm going to keep blending. <gasps> Whoa. Okay, gosh, did you see that? It just went hard. So in one second, that's so I'm just going to quickly turn this off, turn the heat off. That soap just hardened up like a flash. When I first made this recipe, it did that too, but I, I wasn't actually watching it when it did it. That's amazing that that just went like that. So look at that. All of a sudden, you got paste. Wow. We got a little bit of mashed potato paste going on. But basically, that soap, I've turned the heat off now. Don't leave the heat on when it's doing this because you'll burn it. Oh, wow, we look at that. The soap is cooking. This is the best recipe. This is the only soap recipe that I've, a uh, liquid soap recipe that I've ever made that didn't separate and take hours and hours to cook. This is so quick, especially if you watch it. I've only been doing this for about 20 minutes and it's it's um it's come together so quickly. I'm going to test this paste now because that to me looks like it could well be cooked. Liquid soap needs to be well following my kind of method anyway. Liquid soap paste needs to be completely saponified or completely cooked before you dilute it. Otherwise, you might get a a liquid soap that is um, not safe to use and it's too caustic on your skin. So you need to make sure it's properly cooked. Now, there are two ways that I use to tell if my liquid soap paste is cooked. The first method is to do what's called the clarity test. You get just a little touch of your paste, just a little bit, you don't need much. Maybe a little bit more, there we go. A little bit of your paste, then a little bit of distilled water. This will not work if you don't have distilled water because the minerals in the water will make the water cloudy. But if your soap is cooked, well, bubbles are a good sign, but if your soap is cooked properly, and there is no more lye left in it and all of the oils are fully saponified then when you mix the soap paste with water with demineralized water then the water should come out clear let's just have a bit of a look at this I'm not sure if it's quite there yet it's not super clear given that that soap has literally just traced and hardened up straight away I'd say it, it might need a little bit more time to just sit and saponify the second test that you can do is to literally just test the pH with um, paper. Now what I do is grab a piece of pH paper, if I can get it, grab that. Then I just wet my finger. This is just how I test my bar soaps too. Just dampen the top of the paste and put that in. So what we're looking for with all soap making is for a soap to be fully cooked or fully saponified. It's going to be between eight and nine on this pH scale with these pH paper test strips. Now it's hard to tell whether that's an eight or a nine. I'd say it's probably close. So to me, that's actually cooked. That's done. So I'm just trying the clarity test again with a bit of distilled water. I might grab a bit from right in the middle of the batch. You don't need much. And we'll mix that in. 
It takes a while to dissolve the soap paste in the water. Now, this is interesting because there was literally a few minutes in between that first clarity test and this one. And look at that, it's clear. So my friends, this soap is cooked. It passes the clarity test. It passes the pH test strip test. It's done. That is so good. That goes to show you that once this soap firmed up like that, it literally only took another minute or two for the final bit of saponification to complete because the first little bit I took out didn't test clear and this second bit that I took out, look at that, it's perfectly clear. So that confirms to me that the soap is done. I'm just going to do one more pH test. So I'm just wetting a little bit there, pop it on, there we go, it's pretty green. It's somewhere between eight and nine. I'm satisfied that that's done. If that paper was blue and it was at 10 pH, it would need more cooking. And if that happens with your liquid soap, if it doesn't cook like this and turn into a paste, because as I said before, different oils for different liquid soap recipes, they behave really differently. And some of them keep separating, but ideally you want to get to this Vaseline-y, pasty kind of, kind of situation. But sometimes they need to, to stay cooking for a while. So what you can do if that happens with your slow cooker, you can put the lid on and put it on the keep warm setting and leave it for a few hours. If you're doing this sort of method, you can put your lid on the pot and make sure you've got an oven safe lid and put the whole lot into the oven just on low heat or turn your oven on for a minute or two and then turn it off completely and put this in. So the residual heat of the pot and the soap and the oven will keep it warm enough to, to finalize that saponification. You can dilute this whole amount of paste to make a big batch of liquid soap if you want to. But what I like to do is separate this out and store some of my soap paste and just dilute it kind of as I need it really. I'm gonna take about half of this out. Oh gosh, it's so thick. And I'm gonna put it in here. You can see, let's see it's still steaming hot. And then what I do, like that other container I showed you in the beginning, you can put this into your fridge and store it. Now I thought ahead with this and I weighed my pot, which is great because when you're diluting your soap paste, it's very handy to know by weight how much paste you have because that's going to dictate how much water you use for the dilution. I'm going to weigh my pot again and I'm going to write that down. Uh, 1587 Oh, 1588, that's all right. 1587, that'll do. And I'm going to subtract the total weight of the pot and the paste. Uh, 1587 from the pot weight, which was 947. And that gives me 640 grams. So I know that I've got 640 grams of soap. Now, with dilution rates, a really good rate to start with is equal weights of paste and water. It also depends on how thick you want your soap, but there are other things you can do to thicken your soap as well, which I'll show you at the end. But I've already tested this recipe, and for me, a really good dilution rate was one part paste to one and a half parts water. So if I've got 640 grams of paste here, to get 1.5 amount of that for a dilution, what I do is I go 640 times 1.5. So that's 960. So I'm going to put 960 grams of the distilled water in here and that will give me a dilution rate of one part paste, 1.5 parts water. So all you do is 
pour the water in. So again, I'm using the demineralized water. If you can't get distilled or demineralized water, you must use boiled water for this. You can use tap water, it's not gonna hurt your soap. Your soap won't be, crisp, won't be really clear, but uh, it does need to be boiled and sterilized water. All right, so I'm gonna pour in 960 grams. I'm going to turn my stove back on and what we're going to do is just start to break up this soap a little bit. It's very sticky liquid soap paste. You can see how hard that is to break up. It just keeps wanting to stick to itself. Just loosen it up a little bit. The heat will help. Um, if you're using a crock pot or your slow cooker, then this part is easy. You just leave it on low or keep warm setting and uh, that gentle warmth will help to dilute your paste. You don't have to use heat for the dilution, but again, I find it's a lot faster if you do, but it does take quite a bit of time and you've got to be patient. Get, get your dilution happening Heat, heat up the soap and heat up the water. Not too high though, you don't want to burn anything. And then what you do is you just put the lid on and leave it. So with the stove top method, turn off the burner, turn it off and just leave it, let, let it sit with its own warmth and eventually it will dilute. Now I'm a little bit worried that I've got some splattering of some uncooked soap on the sides and I'm just a little bit worried that that's gonna get back into the soap. So I'm just gonna wipe the sides just to get off any little bits of unsaponified soap or lye because I don't want that to get into my clear diluted soap. I'm gonna turn that off now, put my lid on and walk away. Well I'm back. It's been about an hour and a half since I started diluting this soap. What I wanted to point out though is that this soap is not fully transparent. Now it's not a major issue. I just want to explain something because I actually made a little bit of a mistake. When I separated this batch there were some splatters of unsaponified uh, soap batter up on the edges of the pot and because they were just stuck up on the edge of the pot they didn't get cooked in with the main part of the paste so when I scraped those sides down and put them into the paste um, I think those uns unsaponified bits of batter got into the paste and the dilution water and it made it not so clear now the reason why it's not a really big deal is because when you test this soap it still comes out within the safe range um, but it just goes to show you really do have to be careful with liquid soap making because little things like that can really make a difference to the end of your batch. Well hey folks it is now the end of the day and I've decided I'm going to finish off this soap. What's left to do now is to put some scent into the soap. I'm going to be using uh, rosemary and tea tree essential oils because that combination is my favorite. And I'm also going to thicken this soap a little bit with a salt solution. You'll notice that this soap isn't the thickest soap, you know, it's quite runny. And a lot of homemade liquid soaps actually are fairly thin like this but it really depends on the oils that you use. Um, I made a hundred percent olive oil liquid soap uh, the other week and it was so thick it was really thick but it was terrible to make so a hundred percent olive oil is not the way to go. A hundred percent coconut oil soap I know that would be appealing to a lot of you uh, it makes a very runny soap, like a really, really thin liquid soap. Now, to add essential oils to a liquid soap batch, I like to warm it up a little bit. I don't have one of those fancy thermometers. I just use this little 
It's like a coffee milk frothing thermometer that I got years ago and it works pretty well. I'm going to go for about 50, 50 degrees Celsius. With the essential oil, I like to add it at a rate of 2%. So 2% essential oils of this total liquid soap amount. All right, I'm going to turn that heat off. I'm going to add my essential oils. So this is my 23 grams of rosemary and 10 grams of tea tree. I'm just going to pour it in. Whoa, see how that went cloudy straight away? So yeah, I knew that this essential oil combination was going to cloud this soap, but I'm quite happy with that because it's my all-time favorite combination. This essential oil combination doesn't really thicken this soap. Some essential oils themselves will thicken your soap. That's why it's really important just to do a little test and see, see what happens. All right, I'm going to add my salt solution now. This is a 20% salt solution. I'm just going to plonk a bit in. See how it goes white too. And stir it. And it will thicken the soap just a little bit. That's beautiful. Smells incredible. I'm really happy with that. And I hope you're enjoying this video. We're nearly at the end. And now I'm going to show you a lather test. Oh, there was a bit of water in there. <laughs> oh, I've got a fair bit of soap. Oh well. So this soap um, won't have the the lather that some other handmade soap, uh, liquid soaps will have, but I think that's pretty good. That's a pretty nice lather. So that's 70% olive oil, 20% castor oil, and 10% coconut oil. And that's a lovely soap. I use this soap. I always have a pump pack of this right by my kitchen sink. I use it for washing my hands, hand washing, pots and pans, chopping boards, anything that doesn't go in the dishwasher gets washed with this. So it's great. There you go everyone. I really hope you enjoyed the video. Please leave comments and questions uh, below if you would like to. And thanks very much for watching. See you in the next video. Bye.